All right, welcome back. It's Wednesday, and that means it's time to cook. First thing you want to do is scan that QR code. That'll take you directly to a link for today's recipes. Can't believe we're just a few weeks away from Thanksgiving, and uh, you got to start thinking about it all a little bit now. So I'm doing three different Thanksgiving side dishes. Now, I know with side dishes, you want the traditional stuff that your mom made, that your grandma made, that you always have every single year. And I've got kind of variations of some of those things. I told you I was doing a Brussels sprout dish, and I do have uh, some Brussels sprouts and carrots, olive oil, salt, and pepper that I put into the air fryer. And I'll, it's, it's almost done. We'll show you uh, that in just a minute. Every year, people always ask, how can I do mashed potatoes ahead of time? Is there a way to do that where they don't come out pasty and just a big gelatinous mess? And yes, there is. What I did was I uh, boiled the potatoes. These are Yukon Gold potatoes, peeled them, boiled them. And I just had that. That's the bulk of the work uh, right there. Put them in the fridge. And now I've just got these raw potatoes here that I've got uh, my masher. A lot easier to mash when they are right out of the water, but still very doable today. So I'm going to mash these up just kind of rawly. You don't want to overdo your mashed potatoes or boiled potatoes, because that's where they start to get kind of funny. So I've got the potatoes here in a pan already. I put a little bit of my liquid mixture, which I've been heating up. This is a cup of milk, whole milk, and a cup of heavy cream. And I'm just slowly into the potatoes now. You can do this right before you put the turkey on the table. Just gonna mix in the milk, the warm milk and buttermilk, or uh, heavy cream rather. And you can see it's already getting more mashed potato-like. And you do it to whatever consistency that you want. I'm gonna ditch the spoon and go with something that'll mix these in a little better here. So you can see the consistency. I happen to like them a little lumpy when I serve them, but not everybody does. But just keep adding the milk and heavy cream mixture until it gets to where you want it to be. And then from there, put in about a half a cup of uh, sour cream, just to make sure it's good and fat filled. Go ahead and add in some butter as well, as much as you want. Half a stick, stick, whatever you like. Cut it up so it will melt uh, better. And just continue to incorporate this, but again, don't over mix it because that's where it's going to get all gelatinous. And uh, you've got warm, delicious mashed potatoes that are ready to put on the table that you can do in just a few minutes when you've got a million other things going on to uh, get your Thanksgiving dinner on the table. All right, so next, uh, stuffing. Everyone's got their favorite stuffing recipe. I'm not going to tell you that one is better than another. Everyone's favorite is their favorite. I'm just going to show you a different way of serving it. I just made a real simple stuffing with uh, onions and garlic, sage, and I'm putting it in a bunt pan. Oh, I also put into the uh, stuffing, I added, uh, I scram uh, scrambled two raw eggs beat them, not scrambled, I beat them, and put them in the mixture because I'm putting them into the bunt pan and then I'm gonna bake it. So when you serve your stuffing, it's a little bit unusual uh, serving. Most people just do them in a casserole dish. Uh, I think this is the better way to do stuffing as opposed to doing it in the bird where there are some you know, concerns about salmonella, but pack the stuffing into your a bunt pan, into a springform pan, whatever kind of pan you want. I think the bunt pan comes out pretty good. This happens to be nonstick, but you know you want to probably do a little spray of oil in the pan as well. This is going to go in the oven 350 degrees for about 45 minutes, and when it's done, it comes out of the oven, you invert it onto a plate. And look how nice that looks for your, huh. for your stuffing. That's a nice idea. Yeah, a little bit different. These are hazelnuts. You can sprinkle on top if you want. These are dried cranberries. 
that you can sprinkle on top, give it a little bit of color, but a really nice stuffing idea. Okay, so we've got the uh, Brussels sprouts with the carrots I've had in the air fryer. And when they're done, this is about 10 minutes in the air fryer. I might have, for me, I would have left these in maybe seven minutes longer because I like them super, super crispy. But these are, they're, they're all completely done. But here is the magic potion right here. This is the dressing that is going to go on it. And it is maple syrup, apple cider vinegar. Uh, what else is in it? I think that's just, oh, and a little olive oil. And this just gets drizzled right on top. And it adds a sweetness and a tartness. And uh, I guarantee you these are some of the best Brussels sprouts that you're ever going to have. I didn't put bacon in it, but if you want to throw a little crispy bacon in there as well, you certainly can do that. And these uh, hazelnuts are also great on there. You want to put a little sweetness in, some cranberries. All the recipes are up on the web. You can scan the QR code as always, or you can go to WGNTV.com slash Dean Cooks, and we will automatically send you my recipes every week if you text the word cooks to 97999. Next week, turkey in an air fryer, a whole turkey in the air fryer. I'll show you how to do that. Let's send it over to Mike.